There is never a time where he is not in control of the whole shebang. He is worthy to be praised, and so we say praise the Lord. It's good to see you all this evening for our Choice Men's Ministry, first all-male service of this quarter. And we'll open up with a our invocation, and then uh, I've got a statement to read from Deacon Joffrey. Uh, so, may we rise to, to our feet. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus to say thank you, for you are worthy to be praised every day at all times. And if it wasn't for you, we would not be here tonight. You are the one who has blessed us to make it through another week, another work week. You brought us out here tonight, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to be present, uh, not just in our midst, but within us, that you would move and have your way on our hearts and on our minds. Father, you have ordained for us to be here, and we look forward to the word that you have through these seven ministers. Yes, Lord. And we ask your blessing on them right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we ask that you would just open up, uh, open us up to receive what you have for us tonight. May you get the glory, praise, and honor out of this worship experience. And we are careful to let you know that we love you. Yes, Lord. And that we are grateful for all of your many blessings to us. Seen and unseen, known and unknown. So, Father, uh, right now we ask that you would teach us to pray like Christ taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our, Our Father, which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. So our Deacon Joey uh, Gardner is out ill, and uh, he could not be here, but he sent a statement that he asked that I would read, and it says, Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I thank you for coming out to our all-open service where our brothers and sisters can enjoy a word from the Lord together. My sisters, there is no need for the fake mustache, deep voice impersonation, or secret handshake. All are welcome. We will give you a taste of what we do at our all-male service. I regret not being among you, for this is the first Choice Men's Ministry service that I've missed since we began these quarterly sessions some 12 years ago. But God is still able. Finally, please know Minister McKnight would have been here except for a previous engagement. And thank you to Pastor Weaver for his creative suggestion for this service and for my roomie, co-pastor Weaver, for standing in the gap for me. And my beloved wife, Tracy, for caring for me through this sickness as she brings a plate of food home for me. May God bless and keep you all. Amen. 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 So I don't know where our musician is, but it says here that we will sing a congregational hymn, Oh How I Love Jesus, which is found on page 362. I'm going to ask that we attempt this a cappella and at least sing the first verse and chorus, and depending on how the first verse and chorus goes, I'll let you know if we'll continue with the song. So page 362, uh, everyone has it? Yes. All right. 
Okay? Uh, let's stand. Oh, is it on here? Yes. Oh, great. It's actually... Bless you. Bless you. It's actually on the uh, second to last page of our bulletin. All right, here we go. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Not 
grown weary. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Oh, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this preaching moment. Pray, O oh God, that you would hide me behind the cross and that your word come forth with power and with might. Let the ears of those who are here be opened up so they might hear the word clearly and distinctly and be applied to their heart. We thank you, O oh God, for everything you're doing in our midst. We pray, O oh God, that you will get the glory, the praise, and the honor in all that is done. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, I pray. Amen. 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 To the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was famed for the temple of Diana, one of the seven wonders of the world. For three years, Paul labored there, and he subsequently ordained Timothy as overseer and bishop there. John lets us know right away that Jesus holds on to us and walks among the churches. I'm glad that Jesus holds on to us and not us to him. Sometimes I wonder about that song, put your hand in the hand of the, of the Lord. I want him to take my hand because I know his hand will never slip. So my, sometimes my hand will get shaky, but I know that the Lord, if he has my hand, hallelujah, Amen. he'll never let it go. Amen. Walking in this text expresses his unwearied activity in the church, guarding her from internal and external evils as the high priest moving to and fro. And you know, church, I, I hate to say it, but there is evil in the church. And we thank God that he walks through the church constantly guarding against this evil Amen. that would want to bring down the church of God, which cannot happen. So I'm so glad that he walks in the midst. He said, I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil. So they really had the gift of discernment going. One of the problems of the church is that evil that exists within. And Jesus declared that the, in the kingdom of parables that it was going to happen. He said, you cannot bear those that are evil. And they had the purging power within the church of Ephesus. It is a healthy body that can purge the poisons from its system. It is when the church begins to tolerate the poison that it is going to die. If your body gets so weak it can't purge poisons anymore, then death is going to follow very soon. It is necessary that the healthy body purge itself of the poisons within it. And their labor was done, it says, in the name of Jesus. Whatever we do in the church, we've got to make sure that Jesus gets the praise, Amen. the honor, 
in the glory. Amen, amen. I know that sometimes we get the big head. And sometimes we think it's us that did it. Well, you didn't wake yourself up this morning. Amen. You didn't start yourself on your way. In fact, you didn't bring yourself safely here tonight. Amen. It was only through the Lord and His grace that got you here. Preach. So we always got to remember that we do everything in the name of Jesus. And when we don't, that, that's when we run into trouble. And they have got all these works and all these efforts going. It says they are a tremendously active church. They got all the committees, they're functioning as they're designed to do. So what, but the, the one thing the Lord was really longing for is not so much works, but just a loving relationship with his people. That is what God longs to have with you tonight. Amen. The Lord is just looking for a loving relationship with you. We are so often trying to substitute our works, our efforts, for just plain fellowship. When was the last time you just sat down and just wanted to talk to Jesus? Nobody else but you and him, one-on-one. -on -one. Just take the time. You can do it in a car. You can do it when you're walking. I walk my dog and I talk with Jesus. You can do it any time that you have the opportunity. And that's what Jesus is looking for. And the Lord longs for this fellowship. Rather than busying yourself for him, he would rather that you just sit, relax, and share time and love and fellowship with him. This is why he says, you forgot your first love. He said, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. How was it when you first met Jesus? How did you react when you first met the Lord? Well, that excitement, that thrill that you knew in the beginning. God also said to Israel something that like, we should remember. He said, I remember the love you had for me when I was a spouse to you in the wilderness. How that you were talking about me all the time. What happened? Jesus is saying, I am missing the first love. That first bloom of love that you had. Do you remember when you had your first love in this life? When you met the person that maybe you married, or your first love in high school, and now like I say they have their first love in elementary school, and things are <laughs> getting hard. But that first love that you have, you, you do anything. What did Marvin, they said climb a mountain, cross the sea, and do all kinds of stuff for your first love. That's what Jesus is calling us back to, being his first love. Don't keep me on the periphery. Keep me in the middle of your heart. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. And he says, repent. Change, turn, and then repent. Do the first works, or else I will come quickly unto you and remove the candlestick out of its place, unless you repent. So the warning is that he will not stay in a loveless church. He will take that church away from his presence. But where was Jesus walking in the midst? This saith he who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So it is relevant to the message of judgment that he announces, if you don't repent, I am going to take and remove the church from my place of my presence. I won't stay. He is saying, I will not stay in a church that lacks love. Folks, we've got to have more love within the church. We can't worry about what people put on or how they look or what kind of clothes they're wearing. We've got to love them because Jesus made them just the way he is. And the tragedy of so many churches is that there is a lack of love, and thus the absence of the Spirit, which ensues the fighting and the bickering and all the other things that we see. And then he says, but this you do have. You hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. What are the deeds of the Nicolaitans? The Greek words Nicholas and Nikos and Laos are the words for the Nicolaitans. Nikos is the priest or priesthood, and Laos is the laity or the common people. So it is an establishing of a spiritual hierarchy where a man will come between you and God. 
And he would say, no, you can't go directly to God. You've got to come to me. When Jesus died and the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom, God made a way for you and to me to come into his presence. We don't need nobody else to intercede for us. He's made a way for you and me to go boldly to his throne. Amen. He says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden. It said that Adam was banished from the garden of Eden because he had the choice of all the trees that are in the garden of Eden. But the tree that is in the midst of the garden, he should not eat. He could have eaten the tree from the tree of life, but he chose rather to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In a sense, each of us makes that same decision that Adam made. There is a tree of life available to each of us through the cross of Jesus Christ. But so many times people choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's good. They want to dabble in the evil things. They want to know about the evil things. I want you to realize, church, when it seems as though your back is against the wall, you need to come back to your first love. Amen. When the doctor has given up on you and given you a bad report, yeah. you need to come back to your first love. And someone has gotten on your last nerve, yes. I mean your last nerve, <laughs> you need to come back to your first love. Amen. When there's too much money and not enough money, yes. you need to come back, come back to your first love. Yes. You need to know that God will always be there to guide you and lead you yes. if you come back to your first love. Amen. I'm so glad that I can come back to my first love. I'm so glad that Jesus is there with open arms to us. They just greet me and say, I'm glad you come back to me. But sometimes we all stray away. We all get tired. Sometimes we don't do the right thing. But thank God he's there with that first love. Amen. Thank you. chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 of Brother Javius Brother, followed by his father, Minister Paul. Amen. Amen. To the angel of the church of Samaria, I'm sorry, to the angel of the church in Samaria, these are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. slumber nor sleep, you promise to be with us. Even in times like these, God, we, we suffer persecution and are afflicted. Lord, we need you. Send forth thy spirit so that your people can hear. What does say the Lord? In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. You've heard the letter to Samaria, and you've heard that Samaria 
suffered persecution, experienced slander, was afflicted. And like Smyrna today, we suffer persecution, experience slander, and are afflicted, and are afflicted. But God has promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. God has said he would be with us yes. even unto death. Amen. And here in this letter to the Sumerian church, to the Sumerian people, the Sumerian Christians, God is saying to them, remain faithful even unto death. Mm. Brothers and sisters, we've all faced some hard times. If the truth be told, we're experiencing some difficulty moments right now. But I stop by this evening to let you know that God is with you. If you just hold on to God's unchanging hand. The Lord has promised to be with us if we remain faithful. We ought to understand that no weapon formed against us will prosper if we learn how to hold on to God's unchanging hand. See, the Samaritan Christians suffered persecution because of their faith in Christ Jesus. And let me say to you, we too will suffer persecution if we are true to our faith, if we keep our eyes on Jesus. Church, if we learn to stay with Jesus, no matter what we go through, no matter how hard times get, everything will be all right. God is true to his word, and his word has never returned void. Church, it's time for us to pick up our cross and follow Christ. It's time for us to turn from our wicked ways and seek his face. And God has promised to give us a place. He has promised to give us a reward, an eternal reward where we can see him again. Do you want to see him? I said, do you want to see him, church? Do you want to see him? Do you want to look upon his face? Oh, I want to see him. I want to look upon his face. Sing my praise and glory of his saving grace. If we want to see him, church, hold to God's unchanging hand. If we want to see him, remain faithful and we will receive the crown of life that has been prepared for us in glory. In Christ's name, I pray that you will hold to God's unchanging hand and never look back. God bless you and keep you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's Brother uh, McKnight Jr. here. You're listed here for welcome and announcements. So we can welcome to the future. Good evening, church. This is a great day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Are there any visitors? If so, please stand and tell us where you are from and remain standing. Oh, you all family. Oh.
We are the Tuck Church with the Healing Touch. Our mission, our mission is to glorify God by reaching, reaching and teaching and motivating people to become disciples, disciples of Jesus Christ. So join us with, uh, with us as we praise and worship the true living God. If you are looking for a church home, Bethesda will be delighted to have you. On behalf of our Reverend Dr. Al Paul Weaver Jr., Senior Pastor, Reverend Alan Paul Weaver III, Co-Pastor, the Official Board, the Ministerial Staff, and the Bethesda family, welcome and God bless. Yeah. Uh, this is um, so Deacon Jeffrey told me to say, if there's any minister, any ministerial staff that's here that want to speak about any upcoming events, you can take a moment to come up and speak if you have anything to announce or anything upcoming that you want to deliver to the church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, I am uh, Minister Mark McLean. I am the president of the NAACP New Shell Branch. I just want to let everyone know of two important events that are coming up. On Sunday, we have a candidate forum at 95 Lincoln Avenue starting at 4.30. We will have all the candidates from the county legislature, the, uh, uh, the New Shell Mayor Oral Race, and council races there to uh, speak to you and answer all your questions. So it's very important that uh, we have a strong uh, attendance from our community to let them know that we're engaged and we're going to be holding them accountable. Amen? Amen. Uh, and on November 3rd, this is the first Sunday of November, uh, we have the 53rd uh, fundraiser uh, for the NAACP, the Freedom Fund Dinner. Uh, it will be from 4 to 8 at the uh, Molinos at Lake Isle. Um, and uh, we have a, 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 a very good slate of honorees, and it's $100 uh, until Monday, and after Monday it's $125. We do so much work, there's so much work to be done, and, and it, it requires resources. So if you can, we will be delighted if you can come and support us on November 3rd, Sunday, at our Freedom Front Day. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Shane Oshuloye. I'm the, um, one of the co-chairs of the core youth, young adult ministry in Bethesda Baptist Church. I'm also a member of a few uh, uh, community groups, but right now I'm speaking to you as a citizen of Mary Shell. On Monday night at City Hall, um, the League of Women Voters is going to have a candidate forum with our two mayoral candidates. And if anybody lives in the city of New Rochelle, it's really important that you advocate for yourselves. A lot of times we ask for things throughout the year, but this is the time 